In this video, we're gonna be working with outer measures. So far, we've been working a lot with measures and we already know how to measure different objects. So why do we need outer measures? Let's start by remembering what a measure was. We had a set X, non-empty, and a sigma algebra M, and given a function mu, from the sigma algebra to the zero infinity, we said that mu was a measure if it satisfied a few properties. The first one was that mu of the empty set was zero, and the second one was that if we have a sequence in the sigma algebra that are disjoint, then what we needed was the additivity. We wanted mu of the union of these sets to be equal to the sum of the measures of each set. But there are a few things to pay attention here. Finding a measure mu is very complicated. In fact, if I ask you to give me an example of, let's say, five measures, it's very likely that you cannot give me more than three examples. Unless you're very familiarized with measure theory, in which case this video will probably not be helpful for you. So we know measures are complicated. They are first defined over a sigma algebra M. And we've worked with sigma algebras. We know that they are very complicated structures. Just finding examples of sigma algebras is already a complicated task. Moreover, finding a measure defined in a sigma algebra that satisfies certain properties. The first property of the measure is quite simple. We want the empty set to measure nothing. But the second property is actually very complicated. We want for any disjoint sequence in the sigma algebra we want to have an equal sign here, and this is super complicated. Can you see how powerful this property is? So there are two complications in finding a measure. We have first a very complicated sigma algebra, and second a complicated property that that measure has to satisfy. So we ask ourselves, okay, I won't be able to find a measure because it's just too complicated. Can I approximate a measure? Can I get something similar to a measure? And from this object, get finally a measure? This is the objective of outer measures. And we've actually used before outer measures. If I ask you to measure the area of a very complicated object like this one, then you could have said, okay, I cannot calculate this area, but what I can do is try and insert this object in a rectangle. So I can say, okay, this object is lying inside this rectangle, so the area of the object will be smaller than the area of the rectangle. You could go even further and say, well, instead of one rectangle, I can give you two. One like this, and another one like this. So the sum of the areas of the two rectangles will be bigger to the area of the object, but it's also smaller to the area of the orange rectangle. And we could continue like this, saying I'm gonna now approximate this with smaller and smaller rectangles. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna fill this space with rectangles, maybe they're not all alike, but I'm gonna try and approximate it. And this is something we do. We actually have been doing something similar to calculate integrals. So by setting a cover of this set, I can actually make the rectangles smaller and smaller, but the areas will always be greater than the area of the object. And I could do the same inside, instead of drawing rectangles that are bigger than my object, draw rectangles that will be smaller. 
and in that case we will have an inner measure. Now the definitions for outer and inner measure are very similar. All the constructions we're going to be doing with outer measures have their analogous for inner measures, so it's the same. And different books use different ways of constructing things, but they're always equivalent. So that's enough for the intro, and let's actually jump into the definition of an outer measure. And here it is. An outer measure is defined, again, on a non-empty set x. And it's a function that takes elements in parts of x. So here we have already surpassed that first difficulty, because we're not asking for the domain of the outer measure to be a sigma algebra. I mean, parts of x is obviously a sigma algebra, but it's a very trivial one. So we are defining the outer measure over parts of x. So we will be able to calculate mu star of any object for any object that's an element of parts of x. And this was something that we couldn't do before because of one of the first things we saw that was Vitaly set. But we don't have that problem with outer measures. We just go ahead and define it over parts of x. And again, as a result, this function gives us numbers between zero and infinity. The first property is just the same we had for measures. The second property is monotonicity. And this was actually something that measures had, but it wasn't required in the definition. It was just a consequence of additivity. So now we have to ask for monotonicity because we don't have additivity. We have sub-additivity. Sub-additivity was also one of the properties that measures satisfied, but the difference now is that we are asking for monotonicity in point number two and for sub-additivity in number three as a property in the definition. So outer measures are functions that go from parts of the set to zero infinity and that satisfy these three properties. And again, property number three has weakened the property that measures had. So we managed to find a function, mu star, defined on a weaker set because it's a trivial sigma algebra, and that satisfies a condition that's weaker to additivity. But again, outer measures are not measures. So the question is, how can we use them to create a measure? And this is what we will be working with for the next few videos.